when you do mamagami, they say fold in sides first, and I think that's partly so the edges don't rip. But then if you think about it when you're using it, when you're folding it, do it fairly, um, it's not gentle, but do it thinking about the stresses and strains you're putting the paper under and try not to strain it too much. Like this is another piece, I'm going to strain the paper. So instead of folding it in, you would sort of go like that, well, that, some, something like that. A twisted fold that isn't really allowing the paper to fold, it's much more likely to tear it so like it's already tearing there see putting the paper under stress you're not really allowing it to gently fold in on itself so you've got your piece you you fold in your middles and then you can go in from other angles as well and if you do it Again, without don't let any bits twist over on themselves too much and sort of and knead it through let's see what see again if I just squash that you're putting it under stress so try I mean actually that's fine but try and just think about the poor paper a bit if that is you don't want it to tear I of course I really like it I like the tearing and I like its vulnerability and it's almost like making something out of something that's broken or something that's damaged and I love that idea but yes look that one still stayed together really nicely It'll be interesting to see how this one paints up. I'm going to take it the other way. And again, you see, it depends on what sort of look you want, doesn't it? You can fold it like a, in any which way you want. You can leave much more open folds like this one and not overfold it. And that has one effect. Like this one was creased. This is again acrylic on cartridge paper but much more porous a very thin diluted acrylic on the other side and this one was thicker and this was as, as i said was um folded when it was dry and this was folded up this half was folded when it was wet and you can really see the difference it's broken it much more broken up the papers and the same with this one this one was the same piece of paper but wet and this piece was folded dry and you get these really different effects and of course you don't get the seepage of the inks quite the same through this not broken surface so much because the acrylic does form quite a strong oh I know what I did with this I varnished this with an acrylic varnish so there was yet another layer plastic layer on it Again, adds a, yet another attribute to it all. These are two pieces of paper that I have scrunched up. And some of them, no, this one I've added oil. And you can see, you can see by the way it moves, that it's, it's not like paper anymore. It's, it's just like a fabric. I ripped it because that was ripped before I'd add the oil, added the oil and before I'd thought about how I actually rolled it up and how I manipulate it. But it's just, there's parts of it that are just beautiful. And that one was one I did in a previous video. Again, it was very dry when I, when I scrunched it up and didn't have much paint on it but the two together are just stunning they make the most beautiful colours and the most lovely effect and I reckon I could turn this into a garment that I could wear I should wear one for a private view so there's that one and then there's this one which is just acrylic because it's got no oil on it 
and it's just heavy cartridge paper. Manipulation of it has completely transformed it. It's turned into something, again, like leather. And I reckon if I went on doing that, it would get even more heavy duty type thing. So that's got quite a lot of acrylic, a thick acrylic on one side, and then a light coloured, a greeny grey coloured, thick acrylic on the other. And it's hardly cracked at all. The surface is hardly cracked at all through to the paper. But the plasticity of the acrylics is holding everything together really well.